All right, hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Himanshu, and we are continuing our journey of practicing Apex by some practice questions. We have done about eight or nine questions, and we have been able to successfully understand a lot of stuff around conditionals, operators, collections, and how to derive in you know right business logic. Uh, I had another use case in mind, but before that, I just wanted to pick up this use case. I had a comment from one of the subscri subscribers, right? Please explain this question, please. I write an Apex class with a method that takes a list of strings as input and returns an integer representing the count of vowels in each string. So that's the ask. I'm not sure why the crying emoji is shared, but let's take up this use case. All right, before we jump into my use case. So this is essentially a vowel counter, right? So A, E, I, O, U are our vowels. What we'll do is we'll create a method that expects that you provide a list of strings as the input, right? And it will in turn return the count or rather the number of times the vowels have been used in that string. So let's say there are five statements written. For each statement, how many vowels have been used in that particular statement should be the result. All right, so interesting use case. Let's take a look at it. All right, so for those of you who are watching this video directly and you are not following the playlist, we have done a lot of stuff. This is my 95th slide on my keynote, meaning we have covered a lot of ground. Start the playlist from the very beginning and try to come here. And for those of you who are following along, let's jump into our developer console. So let's go to dev console and we'll create a new class and we'll create a new method. So I'll just call it vowel counter and let's create a new method. So what should be the return type of the method? It should be a list of integer, correct? Because it should tell you for each statement. Let me just quickly put up the statements here, right? So this is a use case video from a subscriber, right? I am excited to learn more around Apex, right? Manshu is from Salesforce makes sense, right? These tutorials are bombastic. All right, excited for India versus Pakistan match. Excited for the oath ceremony. So let's say these are all my statements. All right, so for each statement, I should be getting the result as, okay, let's say this has 17 vowels or let's say this has nine vowels. So I should be getting a list of integers or a list of numbers. That's why the return type should be list of integer. Okay, so it's a list of integer count vowels per string should be the name of the method. And this will take an input of list of string, right? Similar to what we have put here above my statements. All right, so I have my statements now. For those of you who have learned a bit of Apex through the videos and who are a bit confident, take a look at the use case, try to pause the video here and solve it yourself. Okay, try to think what could be the potential logic. How should you go around it? How should you go about it? And for those of you who want to follow along and do it with me, let's get started. So I'll just put return zero just because it needs a return statement because it's a list of integer. It will not be zero actually. It should be a new list of integer and I'll just put zero as one element in it. Okay, dummy, dummy return statement just so that the error goes away, it went away. All right, so now what do I have? I have a list of strings. What do I want to do first of all? I want to iterate over each of my strings, correct? So the plan is to iterate over each one of them, operate on them and then proceed ahead, right? So what is my operation that I want to do here? I want to check what are the vowels here. Correct. So what I'll do is I'll tell the system like this is the list of vowels. Now, what are the list of vowels? Let's define them here on the top. So I'll say public static list of string. Right. And vowel list equals a new list of string. And I'll just define each string, which is basically nothing but five. Right. So A, E, I, O, U. So this should be my list of vowels or the vowel list that I have, right? So I have my vowel list and I've told the system that this is my vowel list. It is basically five different vowels. So what I want to do here is I want to count the number of vowels per statement, 
right so we are sure that we'll have to do a iteration first of all because i want to iterate over each statement and then i do want to do a count so i'll say for string each statement in my statements correct so for each statement what is the first statement that will show up here the first statement will be this one right so this is the first statement that will enter the loop now what do i want i want to be able to count the number of times a e i o u have been used in that statement so is there any method that tells me that right so where do i find it because we are in the string string data type we can take a look at our string string uh, database and we can take a look at the string methods right so if i take a look at string methods apex let me quickly just get this guy here so that we don't have to switch all the time yeah and let's open vowel tracker here so sorry vowel counter right so vowel counter this is a use case video from a subscriber let's take a look at the string class right and we want to find out a method that basically gives a count for a specific match and if you take a look here you'll find the method like you'll have to go through some of the methods and try to figure it out on your own when you are doing it but i know there's a method that's called count matches right so it returns the number of times the specified substring occurs in the current string right so basically if you take a look at the example string s equals hello jane s dot count matches hello what does it return it returns one meaning it is able to find that hello has been used once right so let's give it a try okay before implementing it let's give it a try so if i were to do something like how do we give things a try by using the anonymous window so i'll say string s equals and i'll take my first statement okay first statement semicolon and i'll say s dot count matches and i want to basically check how many times a has been used let's see what does it return let's see if this is what we need all right and i'll say execute and open log so it executed successfully take a look at the debug log it says three meaning one two three perfect right so what we can do is we can use the count matches function what we will do here we'll basically say each statement dot count matches now what do you have here how do you match a here you have this vowel list correct you have the vowel list so what you can do is you can simply say vowel list of zero and you can basically check it for each one of them vowel list of zero one two three four and five that's one way of doing it or else because you know that it is static you can create five different variables instead of doing a static hard coding on the array element see vowel list will always be an array of five elements true or false true right it will never change irrespective of any transaction so you can simply say vowel list of zero you can say vowel list of one you can say vowel list of two three four so these are your five elements correct why am i using static array index here i don't want to iterate another for loop and i always know that this will always stay the same across around for my entire transaction nothing can change it why this is static and no one will be able to change it it will always be five if we want to put a check just to be sure we'll say if vowel list dot size equal to equal to five only then go ahead and do it so that puts a additional layer of security that's it all right so what we have done is we have just put some additional layer of security keeping in mind that what if something goes wrong just that's why all right so you can simply say a e i o u even statically but it's good to put it here in case you want to check let's say c d e f g then you can just replace it here that's it okay or you can loop through your vowel list inside your primary for loop so it would be a nested for loop so take that call based on how it deems sufficient for your use case okay for now to me it looks like that i can just say a e i o u using each index here because it is not going to change okay so i'll simply keep it like this now what will each statement give me here this will give me the count of a 
in the string. This will give me the count of E. This is I. This is O. This is U. All right. So what I can say? I can simply say integer or rather what if I simply add all of these statements together? What if I put a plus sign here? Will that give me the total count that I'm looking for? Yes, it will give me the total count, right? So let's get rid of the comments. Let's get rid of the semicolon and put the semicolon at the end. So if I just say save now, I'll say integer vowel count equals the summation of all the count matches for my string for a e i o u as simple as that okay and i'll simply say here system dot debug vowel count save okay let's give it a try so this is a use case video from a subscriber is my first string right and i'll say system dot debug s dot count matches a instead of this i'll simply call my method so i'll say vowel counter dot count vowels per string and i'll define a new list of string here but it will only contain one string element for now which is my s variable that is defined here i hope you are familiar with this instantiation and then adding or defining the value inside it okay let's go ahead and give it a hit execute let's take a look at what is the debug statement so the debug statement says there are 15 vowels in total let's quickly verify 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 i see 14 did i miss something let's quickly check again 1 2 3 4 i think i missed the o here 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 what did it uh, return I'm, i might be ma making some mistake here this is a use case video from a subscriber perfect let's say execute let's say debug only so it says 15 right let's take a look at why is it showing 15 1 2 3 ah, okay I missed this 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 all right great so the system is right I was wrong two times <laughs> all right so now the vowel count is working fine but what i want to do is i want to introduce multiple strings right so what i'll do is i'll introduce another variable string okay let's say string s1 equals let let me pick up my second string okay let's give it a test for multiple strings right because that's the use case and now i'll say s comma s1 i have two strings in my list now what should be the answer i should get a list of strings right basically i should get two different vowel counts in my debug statement here let's see what is that execute debug only so you're getting 15 and 13 correct so the vowel counter is working for each string that you have and it's counting separately perfectly fine awesome so the counter is working fine the addition is working fine all that's left to do is add this vowel count to a list variable so what i'll do is i'll create a list of integer i'll say total vowel counts equals new list of integer and i'll say total vowel counts should be what should be the what should be returned as the return value correct and how do i assign or add values here i simply say dot add whatever was the vowel count for your string just add it to this list perfect and that's done right so what i'll do is i'll create a list of string here let's do, not do string one string two let's create a list of string my statements equals new list of string right and let's add 
each of our statements now these are our statements perfect let's get rid of the star and since these are strings I want to put them in single quotes single quotes right single quotes comma because each string should be segregated or separated by a comma in a list this is basically just a definition and declaration both right last one should not have a comma and I can take up my statements list variable and assign it here instead of this instantiation and manual adding of variables now let's give it a try and see execute before execute let's say system dot debug let's see what is the result that it returns okay let's say execute successfully executed and let's see what the debug log says so it says 15 13 13 11 9 9 perfect so randomly let's check 9 right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 why is it showing 11 why is it showing 11 is the question so what have we done if you take a look at the statement this has vowels which are 11 in size however e and i are capitalized right so since our string contains only small letters it is not able to count it make sense right so how do you ensure that you check the case sensitivity also so this is a very simple way to do it what you can do is you can take your statement and you can reduce it to lowercase and then your entire string will be reduced to lowercase and only then it will match the count so you have a method that's an another method from your string class you can take a look at the string class and you will see that there's a method called to lowercase let me just check lowercase this one right here all right so we'll use this method it converts all the characters in the string to lowercase all right so if I go back here I'll just use this method and I'll convert or reduce all my statements to lowercase and then I'll do a count so now let's save it again let's say execute and let's run it again and see what is the final result so it was 9 for the remaining two right so the second last one now says 11 so now this is the correct answer right so just because we got the numbers does not mean the answer is correct I quickly took a look and then we were able to understand oh okay E is capital but all we are checking is small letter uh, vowels what about the capital ones so instead of you know working on capital and small adding A E I O U again here duplicates you can simply convert the case as simple as that okay so that was our use case on vowel counter and I hope uh, whoever requested it right dudes underscore gaming I hope I was able to explain it I'll see you in the next one which will be our final use case and then we'll proceed into our curriculum